Considering how much I hate myself, it's pretty surprising that I've never been one to really create original characters, but it's certainly a popular thing to do, especially those inspired by Sonic the Hedgehog. But what if you could create your Sonic OC and actually play as them in a game? Well, apparently that's what Sega was thinking also, as they were spending an unhealthy amount of time on fanfic.net while sitting naked on their parents' leather couch at 2am. Sonic Forces is the newest addition to the Sonic franchise for PS4, Xbox One, Microsoft Windows, and the Nintendo Switch. It was released November 7th of 2017, much to the excitement of sweaty nerds in basements everywhere. The story of the game is like your mom. Very lovely and respectable. Dr. Eggman has created a new evil dude thing, some Pokemon DeviantArt OC looking motherfucker who apparently is more than a match for Sonic, because Sonic gets his ass handed to him and is presumed dead for months while Eggman takes over the planet with his army of death. Meanwhile, a rebellious group of good guys take on a new recruit, a character created by us, and soon discover Sonic is still alive and kicking. That's excellent! So it's up to us to free Sonic, effectively making him the hero again and making our character expendable, much like our real lives. As I had just mentioned, in Sonic Forces, you get the new ability to create your own character, a feature I absolutely love in games. You get to choose gender, only male and female though. Sorry, fluids. Species, which all have different abilities, and a few other options, like changing your head style, your eyes, your terrible life decisions, and your color. Speaking of terrible decisions, I made Bubsy. What could possibly go wrong? Not only do you play as your created character, but you also have to occasionally play as Sonic and Sonic Classic, just like in Sonic Generations, because the game hates fun, hates you, and doesn't want you to forget this is a Sonic game and not your fursona fantasy. You also get a list of missions that, once complete, unlock accessories for your character, so you can try to make them look cool and fail miserably. Since the only fashion sense you have is wearing your stupid sports ball hat on an angle making you look like a total idiot. The controls feel a tad heavy, kinda like when you try to eat your sadness away, but there's too much so you just eat like 10 pounds of food, then maneuver yourself sluggishly to the bedroom so you can lay down and stare at the ceiling feeling ashamed and wondering where you lost control of your life. However, Jumping can feel a tad floaty, and can be a bit difficult to land on the platform that stands between you and certain death. Also, when you play as your created character, you get a weapon that gives you added abilities, and the further you progress, the more weapons you unlock, which have different abilities and allows for a change in gameplay which adds to the replayability. The graphics of the game are honestly gorgeous. They definitely strive to make things look as beautiful as they could, which is funny since the main point of a Sonic game is to beat the levels as fast as you can, so you can't really stop to admire the looks of things. It's kind of like painting a smiley face on a bomb. Nobody's going to see it before their face is melted, but it's appreciated all the same. The soundtrack in the game fits pretty well and usually has vocals, so you can sing along as you play and try to forget about the impending inevitable end that one day will consume us all. So, is it any fun? Well, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't enjoying myself while playing it. It's nice to finally have another decent Sonic game, which, you gotta admit, happens about as often as somebody coming back from a heavy meth addiction. What could possibly go wrong?